So, how about some nonsense to start off the next episode? Change of pace, I know. Ooh, looks like it's going to be an exciting week. We've got Issa, Birkino, Perthro, and Gibo. Yeah, I make up words too. Runes of challenge and growth, secrets and relationships. Plus, there's this blank one, the wild card. The way it landed implies destruction, decay. What do these runes mean when they're in this sequence? Runes aren't a literal alphabet. Each has a meaning and they combine to make a larger picture. Cool. Uh, so what does it say? <sighs> he just said it's not literal. Sage and Rosemary both ask the same question back to back. What the symbols mean, even though Caraway just told them the exact meaning of the runes. Challenge, growth, secrets, relationships and the destruction of the previously mentioned. Sounds pretty literal to me. The students should be bracing themselves for hardships unlike anything they faced. That is the obvious interpretation, and since nothing further is offered, the literal reading is the way to go. Otherwise, this whole exercise is a huge waste of time, now isn't it? And are we to understand that in addition to every other overpowered yet underutilized magical ability, fortune telling, actual prophesizing, is yet another thing that just exists in this universe? The episodes to follow seem to eerily fit this divination. If you can read the flow of space time and predict events that are about to unfold, then I think this should be something that scholars work on day and night trying to prevent major catastrophes and the like, instead of relegating it to a parlor trick for children. But the writers once again ignore this concept of potentially cosmic proportions as soon as it is introduced. Because of course they do. Moving on to the actual episode at hand, the theme of the day is relationships. Allegedly. More on that later. For now, the academy has a new student. Shirt. Too sexy for my shirt, so sexy it hurts. Meet Aster. He's a babe. So much so that Rosemary instantly falls head over heels for his chiseled boy's manliness. A tad surprising, judging by the writer's track record so far. I imagined the protagonist would be a strong, independent woman who needs no man. Fawning over a hot guy is oddly standard cartoon teen girl behavior. But naturally, this infatuation won't last. See, the whole point with Aster's character in quotations is that he is unfathomably dumb, ignorant, inconsiderate, pompous, talentless, misogynistic, lying sack of shit, worst human you could imagine. Throughout the episode, he constantly spins falsehoods about obviously fake accolades, while failing in absolutely everything. And that's when I was crowned the city's best Brambleberry Pie Baker. I wish my house were bigger, honestly, because my parents had to start putting my trophies in the barn. Ugh, so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> You can see, I knew that trampoline was there. So obvious. You're welcome, Rhubarb. Sure. How are you not dead? I have no idea. He is worthless in every way. And what's worse, he doesn't express the humility to match it. He is painful to watch. And somehow, even though everyone else in the show barring Rosemary sees the truth about him immediately, this meritless imbecile has somehow been chosen for the Guardian Academy. We welcome you, our first year students, and commend you for being chosen. You've each been selected for your exceptional qualities. My natural sense of direction is one of my best assets. <laughs> the dude is so dumb, he made a sharp left and walked straight into a hedge. I guess he's seriously craving for some bush? <laughs> to Rosemary's initial delight, she gets paired up with the dreamy hunk of dumb for today's exercises. 
And at every turn, Aster keeps being arrogant, dismissive of Rosemary, to the point of not remembering her name. Rhubarb. Yes, yes, uh, Rhubarb. A hundred percent my name. And no matter what, Rosemary just keeps putting up with his crap. Because Kia, Aster Kuhn is so sugoi. Or something along those lines. Also worth noting is the fact that Aster needs Rosemary to bail him out on the obstacle course, because he is apparently less athletic than this noodle limp girly. Right. Now despite being lovesick, and thus being even more spine deficient than normally, Penis! even Rosemary has her limits. See, being a dismissive jerk two times, three times, four times, that's all fine and dandy, but five times? Oh no siree, that's once too many. So, Rosemary has a girl boss moment, finally asserts herself as an independent woman who does in fact need no man, and takes the lead. You see, the show was simply playing the long game with this one. You guys should have seen this girl. Go away. <laughs> you probably thought she's just a regular girl, nothing to notice, but Rhubarb's like really good at this stuff. Do not call me that. Oh, right. Um, Rose Barb's strength today showed me that I have a lot to learn about myself and how girls look cute when they climb walls and stuff. Now in all honesty, Aster did try. He complimented Rosemary, and said he himself has some growing to do, and he sounded sincere, in his own dumb not quite there yet as far as gender equality is concerned way, but hey, baby steps. Aster's biggest sin at this point is that he is really stupid, cartoonishly stupid, and thus he says absurd stupid things. He's not evil or anything. In a normal IRL situation, everyone involved would just move on, meet once in a while in the hallway, at class, and whatever happens, happens. Maybe Aster could learn that he doesn't have to pretend to be something that he's not, just to be liked. After all, he's at the academy to learn, just like everyone else. Every single avenue for meaningful storytelling and character development is wide open. It's been fun, Aster, but... Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Should have known you were stuck up. <sighs> wow, son, we need to have a word. But no, Aster just has to call Rosemary stuck up, because calling someone stuck up is the worst thing imaginable. There is no way to mend the relationship now. He deserves to be punished. <laughs> Whoops! Dropped my hammer. I should be more careful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was very irresponsible of you, Parsley. And remember, physical violence is funny when it happens to men. That's diverse characters. And this is the last we see of Aster, he just poof, disappears from the show, even though he was a new freshman like everyone else. Did he get expelled? I would think that would be big news, someone fucking up so royally that they actually got the boot. But nope, never elaborated. He gets no further mention, no chance to redeem himself, because he is an awful icky man creature, and deserves all the shit that's coming to him. And since he already got his foot turned into sand by Parsley, the interest in his tail is done and dusted as far as the authors are concerned. What a nuanced yarn the writers have so graciously weaved for us. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end. For liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.